Okay, so again, we're gonna be talking about glycolysis um, where it picks up um, glucose after it's phosphorylated uh, inside your cell. Now, this is the pathways I'm gonna be talking about over the next uh, week or so. Um, we're starting with glucose in our blood. And then when it enters the cells, it's converted to glucose 6-phosphate, which is ionic. And because it's ionic, it can't leave the cell because the cell membrane is very nonpolar. All right, then it enters glycolysis and it's converted to three carbon. Now, as you remember, glucose is a six carbon sugar. Pyruvate is a three carbon um, molecule. So what happens is, is the glucose is cut in half during gly glycolysis, forming this three carbon uh, molecule. And then it's converted to acetyl-CoA. Now, glycolysis takes you from gly glucose 6-phosphate down to pyruvate. And then from there, things happen depending on the conditions, whether it's anaerobic or aerobic, et cetera. We're going to talk about that towards the end. Um, and then the pyruvate outside of glycolysis is converted to acetyl-CoA. And then acetyl-CoA can enter the citric acid cycle, which, can, which totally oxidizes the glucose. And you're losing some carbon dioxide during the process and gaining some uh, ATP molecules. All right, now the acetyl-CoA is kind of the pivot point. Well, the pyruvate and acetyl-CoA are the pivot points for this um, metabolism we're talking about here. Um, <clears throat> if you are lacking glucose, um, you, have a, you have a pathway that'll convert the protein into acetyl-CoA, also fat into acetyl-CoA. And then from there, you can go ahead and, and, and can enter the citric acid cycle. Okay, there's, there's some processes um, that we're going to be talking about here. First one is glycolysis, okay? That's where we're taking glucose and converting it to pyruvate. Gluconeogenesis is we're synthesizing glucose from amino acids, pyruvate, and other non-carbohydrates. And that happens when we have an excess, uh, excuse me, where we have a deficiency of glucose and the pathways will dictate reforming that glucose. Um, glycogenesis is converting the glycogen. Remember, glycogen looks like a uh, amyl pectin. It's a branched starch and it'll take that glycogen down to glucose. Glycogenesis is when you convert the glycogen to the breakdown of glycogen to glucose. So there's a buildup of glycogen and breakdown of glycogen. And then there's a pentose pathway as well. We're not going to talk a lot about that, but basically um, um, when we need five carbon sugars, uh, phosphates, that's the pathway that it's used. Okay. All right, so this is the first stage of regulation, is the body senses the need for energy. In other words, there's not enough ATP around. So what happens is the glucose in your blood enters your cell and is phosphorylated into carbon number six, the phosphate ester sits there, okay? That phorylation is called a glucose kinase. Now, kinase is an enzyme have the tables over here. 
transfers of phosphoryl group in between substrates. Where are we here? Um, right here. So this is where glycolysis starts with the glucose 6-phosphate. And it goes to here, generating this three-carbon pyruvate. And because it's six carbons, we and we generate two of those, generating two pyruvates. Now pyruvates, um, then go on to um, um, the um, or my file this is called acetyl this is the acetyl part oh wait that's an oxidation reduction reaction in fact it's called Pyruvate pyruvate dehydroxygen hydroxygenase. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Um, okay, so um When we have excess glucose, uh, it's converted to glycogen, and that's stored as that polymer I was telling you about, that amylpectin-like polymer, um, or it's used to uh, uh, be converted into fat storage. Okay. Now, the purpose of the glycose pathway is to produce two molecules of the pyruvate plus two ATPs and two NADH molecules. This is reduced. Now, as we go through this processes, we're going to be taking and, and reducing the oxidized form of NADH, which is NAD plus to NADH. And this then goes on to the electron transport cycle, which is the third cycle in the phase here. And that is what produces tons of AT ATP molecules, okay? So glycolysis produces two ATPs, two NADHs, okay? And again, that's the reduced form. Okay, so we did that. All right, so I don't, the book says this is step one of glycolysis. I don't think it is. Um, I think this is a precursor to glycolysis. Um, and then once it's phosphorylated, the glucose, then it enters the glycolysis, but depending on what book you read. Okay, um, okay, so glucose is phosphorylated. Now, it requires energy because it's a endothermic reaction. So what happens is the energy comes from the ATP going to ADP. And again, I want to emphasize that these uh, once they become phosphorylated, they are charged and cannot leave 
So, um, so we have an allosteric inhibitor on this enzyme. This kinase. Again, remember kinase moves phosphate groups around. Um, and that's the first step of control in our body. We have a series of feedback mechanisms that will feed back into this first step of glycolysis. Their step two is also regulated as well as some other steps. But this is the first time we see control here. Okay. Okay. There are two ways to write hexokinase. One is hexokinase, the other is glucose. That's the substrate kinase. I like glucose kinase better than exokinase. Exo just in indicates it's a six-membered sugar. This is specific for glucose. Okay. And it's because it's an because it's an exergonic or endo thermic reaction, it requires energy. And so the energy comes from the ATP releasing a phosphate group, which is transferred over to here. And that potential energy in the bond on that phosphate um, being hydrolyzed gives the energy for this reaction to be a go. Remember, there's two reactions now. There's the ATP going to ADP plus the phosphate. And that is then transferred over to here. And then we have the glucose plus phosphate giving us glucose six phosphate. Okay, so a lot of this pathway stuff, there are two reactions involved. One supplies the energy, and the other reaction, which requires energy. So it's a handoff of energy. Secondly, it's a kinase enzyme, which transfers a phosphate group from one substrate to another. Okay. The next is we're converting the 6 glucose 6 phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate. So what's going to happen is so here's the substrate glucose 6 phosphate and the enzyme is isomerase. Isomerase enzymes remember all we're doing is we're making an isomer of the substrate. So this is the substrate, this is the product. Now, I want you to be able to identify, and in part of your notes, you should have charts. Where's the chart? This chart here. And be able to figure out what enzyme is going on. So this is the class here. And, it, and then you have to name the substrate. Plus class. And subclass 
if we can. Okay. Um, all right, so. So glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, okay? And that would be using, I, I, again, a, a summarize. Okay, and then the... Um, That's carbon six, and that's carbon six also. Okay, the next step is we're adding another phosphate group, and So the substrate here is going to be fructose 6-phosphate. And it is a, because you're adding a phosphate group, so it's going to be a kinase. So again, this is the substrate product. Again, this is another control point. And this is where the feedback mechanisms come into play when we have excess ATP or excess glucose. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for inhibition of these steps. And the product is going to be fructose 1,6-bis instead of biphosphate. It's bis, and that's an old hang-on term from the molecular biologists guys that started the biochemistry um, genre of, of chemistry. Okay, the next step is we're going to um, go from a six to a three carbon mo molecule. So this one six bis fructose one six bis phosphate is going to be cleaved into a set of three carbon molecules. Okay. All right. Um, we have the residual phosphate groups. Each of the three molecules gets one. Um, the naming of this I don't agree with this di dihydroxyacetone. Um, there are no there's only one hydroxyl group there. I don't know where they come up with the dye, but anyway, this is historically the name of this thing. Um, um, this is glyceraldehyde right here. Okay, so it is a beta, this would be alpha beta, this would be a beta hydroxy acid, or actually the aldehyde. Now, What's cleaving this is an aldose. Um, 
all their ways. All the ways. Sometimes these are tongue twisters. <laughs> okay. I'm going to end up using the triose phosphate isomerase. Okay. So, okay, the fructose is cleaved to two three carbon. Three carbon uh, molecules. Okay. Now, the important thing is glyceraldehyde three phosphate is the only one that can continue. Okay. So what's going to happen, you have this guy over here has to be converted to that before it can go on. Okay, so so all we're doing is rearranging the molecules, so that's an isomerase. And this calls it triose phosphate isomerase, but really it's dihydroxy acetone. So the substrate is the dihydroxyacetone phosphate product is the glyceraldehyde three phosphates. So again, all we're doing is we are rearranging atoms. Also notice that we are reducing the oxidized form of NAD plus to NADH. Okay, again, we want to have the reduced forms of these coenzymes. Because that's later on in electron transport, it's going to need the reduced forms so they can be oxidized by oxygen, and that produces more ATP later on. Okay, so now we're back to converting the glyceraldehyde into a glycerate. So we have an aldehyde and we have a glycerate. Okay, so this is the substrate. And notice that this is a ester, which comes from an oxidized aldehyde, okay? So this is the substrate. And we end up making 
A13. And here again with the bis again. So All right, so this is going to be oxidized. We get to here. And remember the ester again is an alcohol plus acid. So the oxidation of the aldehyde is in the acid part here. And that's going to be a substrate is three that's the substrate. And so the enzyme is going to be a dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase, that means removing a hydrogen. Okay. So we have the aldehyde. Oxidize to the acid by the dehydrogenase. Okay, that means something has to be reduced. So we have Okay, so that's being oxidized. This is being reduced. Okay, and then we have another kinase reaction where we're transferring a phosphate group. We're taking it off of carbon three. And that's being removed and transferred to that kinase. Okay. So we have a substrate, which is the one, three, this, os, phospho, Rate. That would be the substrate, and then the reaction is going to be a kinase. And then, it, then that's carbon number one. So your product ends up being the three phosphoglycerate. Okay. So at the same time this reaction goes, we end up moving that, the kinase moves phosphate groups, it moves it from the ADP the ATP.
Okay, so we have the three phosphate glycerate, and we're converting it to what? Okay, it's the same basic molecule, except these guys are swapped. And that would be a mutase. So the substrate is It's a substrate, and the enzyme is a mutase. So now we end up with the phosphate group being on carbon two. All right. Now we have never talked about um, when you have. a carbonyl group. Um, that can be interconverted to so this would be a ketone and this is a enol. Okay. And the in is the carbon double bond, and the all is the alcohol part. And that's what's going on here. And the enzyme is an enolase. So we have the This part here. Um, remember back in um, unit one, we had if we have an alcohol, we can pull off the water, it forms a double bond. That's what's going on here. So the water is the water. It's that hydrogen being pulled off. And it's been catalyzed by the phenolase. So this would be, this is going to be the substrate to phos O glycerate, and it's the phenolase is going to be the enzyme. So substrate. Products. All right, and the idea here now is to hydrolyze that ester there, and you want to move it to the ATP. So they call this a pyruvate kinase, I want to call this a phos, because this is the, this is the, um, this reaction here, this would be the substrate. It would be the product. Okay, so this is, so the substrate is going to be a phos, so I move it, and it's going to be a kinase. Some people pronounce that kinase. Doesn't matter. And then what goes along with that is we're producing an ATP molecule. That's the um, So the kinase is transferring this phosphate group up here down to that ADP molecule for, to produce ATP. 
All right. Now, the purpose of glycolysis is to take glucose and move it through a series of reactions to two pyruvate molecules, okay? That nets to ATP and to reduce NADHs. And again, those are needed for electron transport. So we're taking the, the glucose that enters the cell, phosphorylating it, breaking it in half, a series of reactions in it, and you end up with pyruvate and to ATP to reduce ND, NADHs. Okay. I've already talked about this. How do the names of enzymes involved with first resource glycolysis relate to the reactions involved? Well, the first two reactions are phosphorylation. Step one is phosphorylation, one from glucose, two, six. Phosphoglucose. Step number two, again, is phosphorylation. We're taking the six phosphoglucose to one six. This phospho. So, relation is a kinase. So, those are the enzymes. This would be substrate and substrate. And again, they just say hexose as a more generic sugar, but I like to be more specific. So I would like you to be very specific on the naming of your substrate, okay? So the substrate name as specific as you can make it, and then the class of enzymes. Um, uh, okay. Our body can metabolize a number of different um, monosaccharides and other molecules, fats, um, um, proteins, carbohydrates can all be metabolized because they all can generate pyruvate. As far as carbohydrates go, uh, fructose is a biggie, galactose, and monose. <laughs> and those all have pathways to get us over to um, um, uh, step two and three in glycolysis. Okay. Um, Okay, you already know those. Okay, um, fructose enters glycolysis in two places. One where, in the third step, where we converted the glucose phosphate to fructose phosphate, step two. 
in the liver cells is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Um, both of those are intermediate steps in the glycolysis of glucose. So that's where the fructose comes in. Um, galactose has a five-step pathway. I'm not going to talk about that, but basically we can get galactose um, into um, by, or the kinase, phosphorylating it, and then there's some steps to get it over to through isomerate insulin. First step is kinase. And the next step is a series of, of isomerases, which basically are moving um, uh, the hydroxyl groups around to form glucose. Same with this. Um, monos is through uh, again a kinase and I summaries okay so what I just went through in zillions of steps there is um a big deal because it's a central metabolic pathway in most living things, whether it be a single cell organism or a multi cell organism. Now, in an aerobic system, where we have plenty of oxygen, what happens is the pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA. Okay, and that acetyl-CoA then enters the citric acid cycle, which we're going to talk about on Wednesday. In the absence of oxygen, pyruvate is reduced to lactate, form of lactic acid. So when we're exercising heavily, and our muscles are lacking oxygen, that's where we get the buildup of lactic acid. Yeast converts the pyruvate, the pyruvate to uh, ethanol in beer and wine. Okay, so this is the um, ionized form of lactic acid. So this is a three generic pathways where pyruvate can go. Okay, the yeast, it goes to ethanol, and a muscle lacking oxygen, it goes to lactic acid. They never say lactate. Uh, it's lactate because that pH, physiological pH, the H comes off and becomes the lactate, not lactic acid, but everyone says, in the physiological world, um, the robots and stuff, they would say lactic acid. Um, and then if we have oxygen present, it's converted to acetyl-CoA. And then from there, we go to the um, I tried the silicon cycle, the Krebs cycle. Okay. Okay. Now, um, there's a lot of um, There's a lot of interesting things going on with our, our uh, energy molecules going through membranes, which are nonpolar. 
Uh, one of the problems is, for example, uh, what do you do with a, with a um, 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 triglyceride that's been saponified, for example? Uh, how do you get that across the membrane? How do you get um, um, pyruvate across the membrane? Okay, that's called active transport. And what happens is, is we tie, we either change the molecule itself into something that's more compatible with the uh, transport mechanisms in the, in the membrane, or we modify the molecule itself to be more um, uh, accessible to the membrane uh, pathways. Okay, and so let's summarize here. Okay, so we started the glucose comes into the cell, forms the phosphate form, which locks it into the cell. It cannot leave. It's uh, isomerized to the fructose version. We kinase it, add on another phosphate, and we convert the dihydroxyacetone hydroxyacetone to the glyceraldehyde. And then we go down through here, we add um, phosphates to it, uh, and we isomerize it. Isomerize it again, ends up being um, ends up being the uh, uh, oxygenated pyruvate. We need to pyruvate down here. So a couple things here. Um, we make one ATP. Here. Um, okay, because the kinase is, is going to move one of the phosphates from the 1 3 bis, move it over to the ADP, so it's ATP now. Uh, we have summarized the 3 phospho to a 2 phospho glycerate. Then we do a isomerase on this, and we, it costs us energy here. So it's going to take it off of something similar to ATP. It's called GTP. It's a triphosphate going to a diphosphate. Um, and this is where we lose carbon dioxide. Okay, so we go from the three Carbon dioxide leaves, carbon dioxide comes back, and the back at three carbons here. So pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis, not acetyl CoA. Because pyruvate has three options depending on the uh, conditions, whether it's anaerobic or aerobic. So um, I, I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like this one better. Um, I need to modify this, I think. I'm going to modify this a little bit. Okay. All right. That's what I wanted to cover today. Now, there's a lot to go through on this. Um, and the main thing I want you to focus on is what's happening to the actual molecules and being able to identify a enzyme based on the substrate and the class of enzyme. Okay. Um, also where the ATP is produced and also where the reduced, where's our chart here? Okay.
Okay. So using this chart, we should be able to predict the substrate plus the class of the enzyme. Now we go through the um, Krebs cycle, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be looking at what's going on with the molecule. The substrate goes to the product, what's happening. Then we're going to identify and name an enzyme that's functioning to, to, to do that. Okay, And it could be an oxidation reduction reaction, which, which could cost us an ATP or could generate an ATP. Also, there is a... Um, there's an NAD plus and an NADH produced. Uh, those will also I'll be focusing on that. Okay. So focus on the substrate, go into the product, and what enzyme is doing that. Okay. All right. I know this is very detailed. Um, Krebs cycle is just as detailed. Um, this is classic biochemistry. It's very old biochemistry too. This was this was uh, discovered uh, uh, fairly long time ago. Um, okay, so anyway, that's what I wanted to cover today. Um, so <laughs> don't forget to be on time to lab today and Wednesday, because you're supposed to have Dean come in. She's a very nice person. You'll really like her. She's very personable and um, administer the student survey. Okay. So any questions about where we are? Now your project, um, okay, this week we're having um, a lactase enzyme, enzyme that's lab 11. And um, next week, and we're gonna have a lab uh, drawer checkout also today. And then uh, next week, we're going to be doing projects, okay? Now, if your project is due um, um, the end of next week, on the uh, before the uh, on the 11th or before, uh, if you want to bring it in Wednesday, for example, or if you have it today, uh, uh, feel free to bring it in. We can get it graded. Then I'd, I'd like if you could get it done earlier than later. It's just it's going to be... Um, to go through 20-ish projects um, next week is going to be um, kind of wild. Um, I need to figure out a uh, sign-up also for next week so we don't all come in at once and then everyone waits around to like grade everything. So I'm probably going to have a sign-up um, so that we can it'll be more efficient. Um, Need to think through. I'm going to do that. Okay. So, any more questions? Have any questions at all? Okay. Well, I will see the Monday Lab folks in a little while, and Wednesday folks, I'll see you on Wednesday.